G'day, welcome to our channel, Hidden Acres Homestead. I'm Jasmine, this is my husband, Kevin. Hi. We want to say thank you to everyone who's subscribed to our channel so far, we really appreciate it. If you're enjoying this content, it would be wonderful if you could share it on social media to help get the word out about our channel. We know a lot of our viewers have been enjoying our beekeeping videos, so we've got another one here for you today. Today we're going to be looking at some of the jigs we use when we're frame making, now that spring's just around the corner. Um, we've got to get in and get some frames ready just in case we need them for splits and swarms and stuff. That's right. Today we're going to be building frames. We get our frames from Burnett Beekeeping Supplies, not sponsored. Um, so they turn up and they, they turn up flat pack. So you have a bundle, this is this is a hundred, enough to make a hundred frames. So this is your bottom. Then you have two bundles of these, which are your ends. And then you have a big bundle of your tops. So this little jig here, we use this little jig to put these eyelets into these pre-drilled holes in the frames. Just grab one out so you can see it. So the frames already come with four holes in them. These are full full depth frames. So you get your little eyelet and you slide it on the little spike here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put an eyelet in each one of these and what the eyelet is for is so when you put your wire in and pull it tight, it doesn't just cut through the soft pine timber. So what we're going to do is we are going to line it up with the hole and simply press it in. And you can see that one is fitted. Now to do it properly, you, you can actually get a guide that you can put in and it will actually set the height so you're not trying to line up the hole like I am just now but I still find it a lot quicker than using in the in the early days I was just using a nail and putting them in but this makes it a lot quicker okay so you can see that end bar is now complete now to build a frame you need two of those so we'll do another one um, if you're just a home hobbyist and you've only got like 10 frames to do it's perfectly fine you just do it with a nail I've done it like that for my first few years of beekeeping but now that we've got the farm and we are getting more and more hives um, it's just not time efficient to um, be doing them one at a time with a with a nail Okay, so at the moment we are running approximately, I think we're at about 17 hives. So if every one of those hives has 10 frames, there's 170 frames. Um, but we run double double deep, so we run one, one deep as a brood box down the bottom, and then we have a queen excluder, and then we run a um, deep on top for a super. Um, this makes it more universal for us. We can take a frame out of up top and put it down bottom. We can mix and match and it's all the same size. So when I say a deep, that is this depth here. You can get frames of different heights and lengths and they've all got various names. If, if all our 17 hives get up to doubles, that's 340 frames. And then if we do splits, um, we're, which we're looking at doing very shortly. The last time we checked the hives, there was um, drone activity, which is what you're looking for when you're doing splits. So for each one of those, we're gonna put some into nukes and some will go straight into tens, um, just because I haven't got enough nukes, we're just using what we've got. So we're going to need a lot more frames because each nuke box is take, take four and every hive takes 10. We may even do some experiments with um, trying to split one of our big hives in half with just a partition board so we can use it as two hives rather than one. So once, once you start getting a few hives, it's really um, beneficial to start moving to getting yourself some of these little jigs. Now I've got three jigs that I use and I find that saves me a lot of time. You got this one here, which we've just watched putting eyelets in. We've got this one here, which is a homemade jig. 
and what we use this one for is a frame assembly. So we can go along and rather than try and put one piece in at a time and nail it, we can go along and we can stand all these along and this does 10 frames at a time and then we can glue and we can nail our frames in turn and then you just turn it upside down okay so when you get your 10 frames all put together you just undo the little clamps on the end and you can pull it apart this one's still a bit tight so i've just got a screwdriver and then you slide your frames off the end this end does exactly the same um, we'll go through that shortly all right so that's the frame building jig once you've got your frames all made then we go to our third jig which is our wiring jig bit of a giveaway so what we do is we put our frame in and basically we've got rollers and it just makes it a lot quicker and easier but we will go through that we might grab one of our old frames that we're going to rewire later on because when you glue these frames together you want to um let them set i think the you read the instructions on your glue but most of them are about 24 hours you don't want to um start putting too much weight on them before the glue's properly set so we're going to go through now off camera and i'm going to do another 18 of these so we can show you how we do the jig with that the magic of video we've got all our eyelets in um one thing i do have to mention is the eyelets only go to the outside so you have to remember when you're putting them in your jig that you have them on the outside. You can see the holes here. That we only have the eyelets on the outside. So what we're going to do first, because the small part of the frame goes to the bottom, we are going to get 10 of our bottom rails. And basically they just slide in there like that. And then we, we nail them. But the joy of this is that we can open our glue and instead of doing it all one at a time we can go along and we can put some glue in every single one of these so i like to spread it up the sides a little bit we're going to get a cloth later on and wipe off any excess that squeezes out so Okay, and just like that, we've got our 10 end frames all got glue on them. So basically what we do now is we just get our, our bottom part of our frame and we just go along and put them in. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use this nail gun. It's just an air nail gun. Um, I like to use these um, narrow crown staples. They seem to do the job nicely. So um, we'll just make sure we've got some in here, which we do. We're going to plug the air on. And basically, we're just going to make sure it's buttoned up. We're going to push down on the nail gun and it nails it for us and this is where the jig makes it so much faster because we can just run along one after the other and nail them on. just like that that's the bottoms complete now. So what we do is we pick up our whole jig and we're going to flip it over. And then you just slide it down, give them a bit of a jiggle. Okay, and now it's uh, basically repeating what we've just done for the bottom but for the top using the top bars we're going to go through our gluing and then we're going to put our top bars on and nail them in just like we did the bottoms we'll be back in a tick with the magic of video so one thing to remember when you get to putting your your top bars on 
These ones only go one direction. Your bottom ones, it doesn't matter. There's no grooves or anything in those. So you'll see on this, there's, there's actually a groove already cut in it. That's for your foundation to butt up into. And then you also have a taper cut on this here where it sits on the on the shelf of the of the hive. So that groove and that shelf face downwards or inwards for the groove. It faces in towards the frame. And then, yep, we're just going to go along and we're going to nail these just like we did before. Yep, they're all nailed up now. So, like I said before, you can um, take the ends off this jig. Sometimes they're a little bit tight, so I like to get a screwdriver in there and just pop the end off. Okay. And then, like I said before, you can just slide the jig out from the middle of all the frames and get rid of the jig now we don't need it anymore for this so what we're going to do now is we've got a damp dishcloth and we can just go wipe any excess glue off that we don't want the bees having access to okay one last thing that i just like to do that we've got our frame all put together i just like to run a square over them just to make sure that they're square makes it a lot better when you get them in the hive if they're square so um, just go through and check all 10 or how many ever you're making. And um, yeah, the jig usually makes them come out pretty, pretty right, but I just like to check. And if you have to, like this one here, you can see a little gap. Okay, so this one here, you can slide the square down. You can see there's a little gap just under the timber there. It's close, but if you want to just Pull down on that one and push on that one. You don't need a lot of force until you get it square. You can see that that's pretty good there now. And then as the glue dries, um, it'll, it'll actually set where you want it. Okay, so we've gone through and we've checked all our 10. We're happy that they're all square. So we're just going to stack these away now so they uh, set overnight and um, we'll come back to these later on. Um, what I'm going to do shortly, I'll go through some of my old frames that we've got to rewire and we'll go through the wiring jig and it's exact same for if you're doing an older frame that you're rewiring as to rewiring this frame now. I don't like to wire on these while they're still wet, the um, wire puts pressure on it and you can actually pull them out of square so I like the glue to be set first so we've got an old frame that we've used before um, the wires on it were really loose and had it so what we're going to do is we're going to use this frame jig so you just slot your frame in we've got this little ledge here so the frame just sits in and slides up against that we've got this little lever that pushes this side over against the other ledge and you can see it puts a little bend in the frame that just helps us get tension on the wires um, this frame here because i'm redoing it, it it already had nails in the end but you would put nails in the end there and just leave them sit up a little bit like that and that's for you to attach your wires to so we're going to go through the top eyelet and it goes across and then you find your hole on the inside and you come outside that eyelet you go around this roller, back through the next eyelet, and you can see what the jig does. It just lets everything turn smoothly. I've done it before without the jig, but it makes it very hard. You have to sort of guess how much wire you need. You end up um, wasting a lot of wire where this, like I'll show you in a minute, you can actually go through and pretty well tension your wires and waste very little. Make sure it's in the groove of the pulley. So when we get to the other end, I like to just pull a little bit through and just wrap it. I know a lot of people tension it with the um, 
with the reel, but that's not how I like to do it. Um, so what I do now is I just take it off the first roller and reclaim that leftover wire that I have and then do the same for the next two, two rollers. And you can see there, we've got a little bit of wire left here and basically we bring this one up and we've got a little bit of wire here. So at this point, what I do is I tension it from both ends. So I'll take a pair of pliers and I'll pull some tension on that wire and then wrap it around that nail. You go around three or four times. And then I'm going to do the same on this one. If you pull too tight, you will actually snap the wires. So we wrap that around. So now we're at this point, we can actually remove it from our jig. So we can undo the lever, it takes the weight off and lets it come loose. So when your wires are nice and tight, they actually play like a guitar. Okay, um, so from there, all that's left to do is to tap our nails down flush. And then what I like to do is twist the wires and you'll see how, how easy they break. And what that does is it breaks it off flush so you don't have like if you if you went and cut it with a pair of pliers you, you have a little needle sticking out and this stainless steel wire is just just like a needle it will stick into you and it hurts and there we go we have a frame that is now wired ready for foundation um you can use foundation that you made at home you can use foundation that you bought if you want to uh, see how to make your own foundation at home, we've done a video on it. And we're going to have another one coming up soon with a piece of equipment that Jasmine's bought me. Uh, we're keen to try it, so stay tuned for that one. All that's left to do now is put foundation on. Um, it's up to you whether you choose to buy your foundation, which has already got the uh, cells imprinted on it, or make your own homemade foundation, which is just a flat sheet. Um, if you want to see what we done and the results, you can uh, have a look on the videos we've already done. We'll put the link in for that. If you like this video and found it helpful, give it a big thumbs up. Thanks for checking out this video today, guys. We'll see you in the uh, next one. Bye. bye.